Egypt is a vast country, spreading over a million square kilometers. But numbers can be deceiving. Only about 3% of the country's landmass is actually habitable, whereas the rest of it is a seemingly endless desert. If you take a look at satellite pictures, you'll see a thin green ribbon wriggling through a vast expanse of Sahara sand. The River Nile is practically the only source of water for the country, which is why it's often called its lifeline. Its banks are home to almost the entire population of Egypt. For thousands of years, the river has been a source of irrigation that transforms the dry area around it into lush agricultural land. The bustling megacity of Cairo is considered by many to be the capital of the Arab world. For its population of over 20 million, the Nile is the only source of water. But the origins of this waterway are to be found beyond Egypt's borders. The headwaters of the Nile are almost 7,000 kilometers south, where the sources around Lake Victoria and the Ethiopian highlands feed the White and the Blue Nile. Around 60% of the River Nile's waters originate here, in the Simeon Mountains in Ethiopia. But Egypt's lifeline is under threat. The farmers living along its riverbanks are struggling. Where the Nile's waters used to flow unabatedly, thus irrigating local farmlands, the canals are slowly drying up. There's very little water from the Nile. In winter, the situation is a bit better, but in the summer months, we don't get any water. As a result, Egypt's government wants its farmers to use more efficient irrigation systems and plant crops that need less water. But the river draining into non-existence is nothing new to the Nile region. Let's go back in time. 10,000 years ago, the panorama looked like this. Vast grasslands, rivers and lakes filled with water. Life was blooming. Everywhere was lush and rich. But over time, conditions became hotter and drier. Humans and animals had to resettle, leaving behind these cave paintings portraying an old, forgotten way of life. Meroe was the capital of the ancient kingdom of Kush. These small pyramids were the blueprints for the monumental tombs of the pharaohs. Once a vibrant trading hub for ivory and gold, Around the 3rd century AD, the city of Meroe was lost in the sands of time. Around 1,500 kilometers to the west, in northeastern Chad, is the Enedi Plateau. 10,000 years ago, this place had a subtropical climate with enough rain to sustain large lakes and the Yellow Nile, the third main tributary to the River Nile, which has now disappeared. What's left are a few subterranean caverns filled with water, like the famous Guelta of Arche, 
the water source for thousands of camels and the last resort for several animal species in the region, including the West African crocodile. Old cave paintings, dry wadis, and abandoned ancient cities serve as a warning sign for modern Egyptian communities. The fear that this pillar of life could crumble and whole societies vanish is imprinted on the nation's cultural memory. Apart from the current water scarcity problems in Egypt, an additional geopolitical dispute has come into play. In 2011, Ethiopia launched a $5 billion project called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. GERD, as it is called, is set to be the largest dam in Africa, putting an end to decades of food, power, and water shortages in Ethiopia. Additionally, the sale of surplus electricity to other countries in the region could bring in $1 billion a year in badly needed revenue. The project is fully supported by all of its neighbors, but is heating up fears in Egypt. GERD can only begin to achieve the benefits promised to Ethiopia by creating a vast reservoir, holding back river water that would otherwise pass down the Nile. Egypt now fears that their farmlands could dry out even further. The source of life is becoming a source of conflict, to an extent that some leaders have even issued saber-rattling threats. Many news and media platforms have even spread their concerns of a water war brewing over the Nile Dam. Fortunately, the conflict has toned down a bit over recent months. With mediating help of Sudan and the USA, Ethiopia and Egypt are now trying to find diplomatic resolutions. Ethiopia could minimize the immediate downstream damage by lengthening the time it takes to fill the reservoir. Egypt, on the other hand, has to do its part by investing in innovative farming and irrigation methods, which would help reduce its demand for water. Like all major waterways, the River Nile is a delicate ecosystem that needs to be protected by all the countries surrounding it.